some very quick kind of what we call design sprint exercises. They're basically um, little visual kind of techniques that are uh, designed to explore a uh, potential future. Um, and in this case, it's going to be decriminalization or widespread drug policy reform. And essentially, we'll just do a couple of desk based exercises, and they are designed to externalize your knowledge um, in a collaborative way um, and um, explore how you can get to the point of decriminalization or widespread drug policy reform. So they're, they're simple, um, although the underlying kind of meaning should come through once you're doing them. Um, so yeah, that's basically what, what's going on. And if you don't want to participate in any of the elements or something that kind of worries you about it, then you know, just tell me you, you don't need to kind of go ahead. So, um, I think we're just waiting on Suzanne. Okay. Fiona? Okay. Yeah. Should I? Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead. I've got a small little presentation, and then I think I'm going to split you into two groups, if that's okay. Um, I might just do it like right down the middle, um, because it's slightly easier to work in a smaller group than kind of like ten people all at once. So, yeah, I've already said hello. I'm Jonathan. Um, I'm a designer and a student from Glasgow, and. I studied at the Glasgow School of Art in product design. Before we go any further, um, I get this question quite a lot, so I'll kind of pack it before we get there. Um, what I do as a designer generally doesn't conform to what you probably traditionally think is design, like an industrial design, uh, where you make objects and furniture and phones. I'm more interested in kind of innovative and uh, design processes and how they can be used in a, a wider variety. I'm a big believer in visual communication, and I believe that using tools to visually communicate issues is a really helpful way of understanding them, and a really helpful way of externalizing and sharing knowledge. So that's basically where I come from. Um, and I just want to show you this. This is um, featured in a book called Speculative Everything, and it's, um, it's called The Cone of Possible Features. Now, Basically, what this prophesizes is there are multiple potential features. So it could go one crazy way, another crazy way. There's this kind of middle spectrum here, which is plausible features. And uh, this kind of main beam, which is the problem future. So where we're probably heading. This part here, this kind of gray element, is where I kind of want to situate you in terms of thinking. So I want you to think about our, the preferred future. So I want, I'm basically setting this kind of design experiment up based on the ideas that in five years' time, decriminalization has happened. So that's the kind of preferable future that we're kind of dealing with. So the exercises are just built to explore that narrative, and they're just really simple and really fun, hopefully. Um, Why are you talking about decriminalization rather than legal regulation? Well, we could go legal regulation if that is something that would be the preferred future. I guess this is kind of a good starting point. Would that be a kind of shared consensus legalization and regulation? Would that be potentially a more impactful? Yeah. yeah? I don't know. Well, if we're talking about Scotland, decriminalization is more possible without getting the old powers, whereas legalization is not possible without the UK. So I guess it depends. If you're focusing in Scotland, I think personally, I think decriminalization is more realistic. But it's a first step towards legal regulation. Yes, you wouldn't yes. want to stop at decriminalisation. No. For me, it always just feels like a halfway house decriminalisation. You don't solve really any of the problems. No, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. But I guess it's just like, what, what is our goal yeah. for the project, for this project now? Is it, is it looking at something that's feasible in the next 10 years? And does that matter with what we're trying to do? No. Should something feasible, something that we would dream, like, yeah. to project for? Yeah, the more kind of wild eyed and the more. You know, um, beneficial, then the better, I think. Um, so if we want to go for legalization and regulation, I, I guess you've already kind of pointed to one of the elements here is deregulation would be a kind of step in that direction. Um, so that will feature kind of probably prominently in a couple of the exercises. Um, so basically, we start with a really simple one, um, and Michael actually touched upon it quite a lot through his presentation, which is the key players. Um, so basically, um, I've got these envelopes here. 
And I'm going to split you into two groups, as I said, and I'm, I'm, it'd be great if, as a group, you could have a quick discussion about who you kind of think are the, the key players in achieving this goal of legalisation and regulation. And basically, as you come up with them, if you could write them down um, on the bits of card and uh, yeah, using the pen to kind of provide it. So, if I could, could I split you in this here? Or? Do you want us in little groups over? Like, the tables? The tables is fine. The tables are all just going to be Because we don't think I'm stealing our idea. <laughs> <laughs> just say, I will get your own country, your own legislature, your own legislature. Your own legislature. Your own legislature. Private, our own private yeah. utopia. I think so. I think we're just doing the numbers to see which way. Yeah, so we only have one private, private. We've got seven. Yeah. What, they've got more? They're sitting there, they've got six. And we've got seven. Okay. Get the fear of the Arm wrestling. Some more. Some more. Right, what people can you say? Do we all come yeah. Lots and crosses, we go first. You. Who's got a key player then? Who wants to write down key player? Hmm? In, in achieving legal regulation. What if everyone do one and then we'll see? It doesn't matter if we've got some people do the same. Everyone just put their top three. How about that? Oh, no, we're going. We're writing for three. Huh? Three people use drugs. Three PS. So yeah, who who you believe should be could be the key players in achieving legal reform of the drug laws. So just just put down as many as you can, maybe up to three each, and then we'll compare them. Could be the key players in in bringing about change. They could be in Scotland. Um, anywhere. Yeah. Oh, we'll be good. Let's stick to a national, national scale. UK. UK. Um, it was originally so okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think if we just all look at what we've got and then we'll pick, we'll refine it once we've got once we've got a selection. Um, and don't worry about how accurate they are or if it's you know a specific person, if it's an organisation. If it's a group of people, that's fine. Just think about who, who those kind of key players in, in, in achieving that. Right, I've got three. You've got three. You've got three. Two so far. Three. You've got three. You need one more, two. Two's okay if you can't come up with a third. Two's don't no pressure to do a third. If I was you, I'd put your wife on there, number three. <laughs> I'd put your, you'd put your wife on there, number three. <laughs> I would, I'm not joking either, I'm not joking. You've got three? Just one more minute on this one, and then we'll move on to the next one. Should, should we, we've got one minute, so we've just got one minute. So should we share? Can we share as a team who we've got? Everyone, excuse me. Excuse, we've only got one minute, so can we just hear what we've all decided? Because I think we were meant to, they're doing it collaboratively. Who do, who have you got for your three? Activists, addicts, and politicians. And who have you got? Okay. Justice Minister, the Health Minister, and her. Yeah. Communities, families, way affected by addicts.
Sounds good. What have we got? People who yeah. use drugs, farmers, yeah. and the recovery community. Excellent. Uh, Howard Legal Penal Reform, Law Society, and the First Minister. And I've got the Prime Minister, the editor of the Daily Mail, and the Home Secretary. So it's really interesting because you, yes. they nearly all got it as coming from grassroots up. That's the majority, as if you're all saying it's going to come from the people and the lived experience. And then you've got you've got organisations, and a couple of us have gone for authority figures. I'm not sure if the law is in the hands of the people. Living justly is. The law is a matter of seconds, 20 seconds on this one. We just don't want to go and see this picture. No. Give it to me. Change comes from the bottom. Movement rises up again. Yeah, and again, it's following the money. It's not so hard, though. We need people. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I find it sort of quite to me. I'd, m- I'd much rather your. I love your answers much more than this is boring to me, and I don't want anything to do with it. But that, to me, that's the reality of people who hold power. But the chances of getting them to change is nearly impossible, right? We get the people and see what they come up with, and that's what spreads out. We've been like a virus. With what? No, unfortunately, yeah, I'll call this one in. Are you wanting like three names from each group or not? It's just to talk about the idea. It's a kind of collaborative okay, effort. It's supposed to be a kind of right, discussion to start our to begin with. Okay. We've all turned to these at the end, yeah. um, just very quickly. Okay. But, um, yeah, so I think that'll do for, for just now. Don't worry about the level of resolution. If you could just, you know, gather them up and put them back in one of the, the envelopes that I gave her. Was this just <laughs> No, mine was this just space. Thank you very much. I know, no one does. I don't usually point them out to people, but I really enjoy wearing them. Oh, I don't even know. That's like, uh, you know, who's that? Um, Conor McGregor, he's got a shirt, the pinstripe shirt, the, um, the line in it says, Right. And it's a friend of mine, a friend of a friend who's been through cancer, and she's a designer, and she's been coming up with all these patterns, these like offensive patterns, but then you know you don't think, you just think it's a nice flowery something. Yeah, and it's, uh, I've got a T-shirt on that says "fuck all." It says what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's she made that. yeah, yeah. She made them all. She, yeah, they're on Etsy. They're on Etsy. There's loads of them. Really offensive slogans that you, you can't spot. Yeah, the pattern's great too. Yeah, yeah. She's done loads of like, all, all the hunting things, <laughs> all the hunting shit. I'm really, really. I'm gonna get that for you, Sam. It always makes her squirm. Oh, does it? Well, in Scots Club, he thinks it's like a term of endearment. This made me laugh. Get all those. Empires are run by empires, what are countries? You all came to move on? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so the next one is called speculative timelines. Um, this basically is a really simple task again, using the post that's on the table. Um, basically, this end point here is the end goal, as you see the end, and the starting circle at the beginning is, is now. Now, working back the way, will be a lot easier. So working from legalization and regulation back the way is going to be a lot simpler um, for this exercise. So I basically want you to think about what steps would be involved in achieving. We've already touched quite a few of these 
to make those talk and all the uh, in the kind of short period of time here. So if you write them down on post-its, they can again be as broad or as specific as you want. And we'll lay them out in a timeline. Um, so the first one, I just want you to think about what steps would be involved in achieving mm -hmm. the legalization and regulation of drugs in the UK. Yep, does that, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, as many as me. So I've never thought of what that last one would be. Because you would do make heroin assisted treatment, you'd legalise cannabis, how do you get like all the other ones? What are all the other ones? Cocaine, crack. Do you know, like, like full regu a fully regulated drug market, which is like every single drug. So, yeah, don't worry in about some way. And I've never read yet. those chapters. <laughs> they don't take each drug apart in the transform stuff. They don't do each drug. Oh, but you require to legalise all drugs, so they must have a part. Yeah, they did it a couple of years ago. We've got to do that one first. We can put them in there. Yeah, it doesn't matter where we are at the moment. That will return to that in a minute. Let me take this out. Yeah, the bill. Can you just go through the various patients? The bill. Yeah. 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 And I don't know how to smell the I know how to cook it, I know how to shoot it, I know how to spell it. O I N. Oh, that's it. That's It's weird this and he went to the the and 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 Thank you. 
is not really yeah. 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 like a public awareness yeah. campaign. Yeah. 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 General, yeah. 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 Yeah.
course. Uh, done that. But it doesn't have to be. Well, you vote by saying. Is that why you didn't come around like this? We did. We killed two people. Number numbers don't necessarily make it easier. Um, you find to organise. So yeah, if we think about technology, it, it can be loose. I'm not doing it. And if there's events that co collide, collide, uh, collide, then put them next to each other. Yeah. So that sort of thing. Okay. So right, education is going to come up again and again. My feeling is that's where it starts. Yeah. Well, why don't we put all the education things together? You can bring the MP and the point bring the whole parliament. Yeah, so <laughs> education camp and campaigning. So, wait, what we say, Fiona? Well, all the things that kind of go together. So, like, yes. edge, that's that's okay. similar so because they're yeah. 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 and then yeah. touch yeah. arts yeah. and minds. Yeah. 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 yeah, so to me, this is different. This is raising awareness, educating the public about drug policy. Yeah. This is about actual drugs themselves, rather than drug policy. Yeah. 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 If you're going to change the policy, you need to educate them about the realities of drug use. Yeah. 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 So that's slightly that's different. Um, medical cannabis, that's a campaign that comes earlier on, doesn't it? Drug testing in clubs and festivals comes up. Can help to provide evidence towards a new policy. Drug users to come out, that's education. That's education. That acknowledge drugs can be fun, that's part of it. Yeah, where's the drug education? There's a drug education, drug education there. Right. Yeah. Who wrote this orange education? Who's is this one? You had orange. Fiona, is that you? Education. Well, and what kind of education do you mean? I mean, it was public or a people of kids in school? At school. Oh, okay. So that would, that sits with these ones then. Yeah. Shift of faith communities. Legally value extra legal economy. This is. What have I got? Demonstrate advantage of change. That's a lot of it's evidence collection, isn't it? So demonstrate advantages of change. I think um, these ones all kind of are here somewhere. Reform Parliament, deregulate, yes. Legally value, extra legal. So that's all demonstrating advantages oh, as well. That's, that's kind of Tax a little bit. Yeah. Some of that. Devise yeah. policy for regulating each drug. So this is all towards to show it can be done once there's a belief. You need to get people to believe it can be done before you can show it can be done. Obviously, that's happening. Pressure politicians to understand public drug policy and its outcomes. That's all part of this. Great realistic um, de de so, uh, demonstrate advantages of change. That's here too. Public opinion education. We've got that all the way through, haven't we? Um, yeah. Tax. What's that? Transparency on what it's. What is contained in dosage? So, okay. Yeah. That, that could probably, uh, that's kind of part of here as well, drug testing, yeah. and, and that they sort of go hand in hand, don't they? Mm. Transparency in what's contained in dosage, and that's part of also the argument of um, pressuring to seek evidence, highlight current drug policy failures, that's another part of that too in a way that you don't have transparency on what's imagined. Um, calling out stigmatisation, that's part of education. A lot of it's sort of in the early stages. Decom ring fence money. What does ring fence money mean? So, what I think, because I don't trust governments, and it really worries me that we'll give them another like funding stream that they'll just use for more. So in Portugal, what they said is the money that we're going to save within criminal justice, 60% will go to education, so that reduces stigma, and 40% to treatment. Yeah. And I think that has to be done when you're... Because you can't... I wouldn't yeah. trust them. You can't use that money for something. Yeah, it's like... I mean, well, is there, is there, is there no way to make sure that the funds are allocated to go in the... That's why you call it... Right? That's the kind of ring fence. Who's the... put reform parliament? Why, what way do we need to reform parliament? Um, so it's more representative, so it's more evidence-based, so that they can lie and then change their minds. That the, the, there is some there is some kind of come up and for uh, deceiving the public. So we sort of need that to happen sooner rather than later, though, don't we? Isn't that? Yeah, I'm not sure if it would be it would happen sooner. 
I think it's something that happens later. Yeah, it might even happen <laughs> after. Yeah, I was just thinking that maybe something <laughs> might be, It might after. be after legalisation and regulation. Because, yeah. because this might be the thing that inspired it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well... I, I, I'm not convinced that this parliament is can behave in ways that it doesn't already behave. I think that's the case with a lot of institutions. Can it behave any differently from the, the way it already does? Scottish Parliament, different different, different organisational structures. Yeah, so it could be easier. Yeah. And no bars in the parliament. Yeah, there's bar in parliament. So, you're all like that much more. Um, you know, so, so basically, I want to take a minute. Yeah, I like, can we put that after? Because I like that. Basically, I want to take a minute each, and what I'd like you to do is to present to the other group your timeline. So, <laughs> it's where it gets interesting. Um, <laughs> so, I'll start with this group, going this way, and then we'll give you guys. Uh, it's favourite group, group. I know. If they want this, let's pop the table. Not necessarily as interesting. Save the best. Someone's going to be? Yeah, yeah. Someone's going to have to be. Yeah, yeah. 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 We can bet that much. Okay, yeah. So just a, a quick minute to kind of talk through some of the key points, starting from now and then going to the end. Go on, go on, go on, go on. We had a very engaging conversation, but I think basically we start from the front. Um, public perception campaign, which is really important as opposed to public awareness campaign, and we reckoned it was multiple strands. So um, going to different communities, for example, research with communities, mm -hmm. yeah, drug testing facilities, um, information, information drops, drops multi-strand groups, so, so multiple different communities, um, drug consumption rooms, medicinal cannabis, what does that say? Um, lobbying counsellors. Lobbying counsellors, heroin assisted uh, treatment, which is the same as legalised. Heroin. So what we saw was there was like a massive, um, from now until decriminalisation is where all the main work is going to happen, you know, and predominantly what it is, is to do with public perception, public awareness, getting the conversation instigated in different communities, basically, um, because what, what the discussions that we had is that if the politicians and the policy uh, the civil servants believe that their decisions are going to be supported by the public, then they'll make that decision. And decriminalisation is not a massive shift, it's the public perception. So we then get to decriminalisation, um, and then from there, we didn't really focus much on it. It's, it's more like once you've got decriminalisation, you've kind of had the conversations. So it's just about then somebody submitting a bill for legalisation. Um, and then it goes to the first reading, the second reading, House of Lords, first reading, second reading, back to the House of Commons for a consultation and then Royal Assent. In Scotland it would be slightly different, in 10 years time we might be independent, so we would have a different, a different route. But I think what we really sort of came down on is that it's, it's for now until we get to any other form of regulation, it's the public conversation that needs to happen and, and people need to be um, excited about wanting to talk about this stuff and understanding the impact that it has. And also talking about that like, money, where's the fucking money? <laughs> you know, because you need to get people out there and you need somebody to play to, you need to pay volunteers to go out there and stuff. So yeah, I think that's anything else you want to add in that we discussed. I said boom. Boom. The heat is on. I saw it. That was more than a minute. Sorry, sorry. So, yep, minute. Okay, minute. 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 Um, we agree that it does definitely start with information, awareness raising, um, encourage honesty amongst drug users, drug users to come out, um, inform public opinion, raise awareness, 50 overdoses a week, 50 overdoses a week, this is mass murder, it can't carry on. 
um, need to, that will go hand in hand with calling out stigmatisation of drug users and drug use. Um, then we also you need to arm yourself with what the alternatives are. So seek evidence of where a change in drug policies worked elsewhere and how we reduced overdose deaths, to keep people safe. Pressure politicians to understand drug policy and its outcomes. Again, this sort of, we're moving out of general public awareness into awareness of um, groups that can actually make a difference to policy. Um, someone's talked about philosophical shift of faith community. So obviously awareness raising can take many forms and you can look at faith communities, you can look at politicians, obviously there's the media and there's special interest groups everywhere. Um, hearts and minds through publicity, so just heart statistics and evidence doesn't do it, so you need, you need to go through to hearts and minds also. Me the medicinal cannabis argument is a sort of separate but framed within the bigger picture too, and that, as we've seen elsewhere, is the thin end of the wedge in bringing about change. Um, and then through medicinal cannabis, there are other types of decrim, soft um, soft end policies that could happen. Heroin assistance, assisted treatment will save lives in the short term and again start to give figures about how change, facts and figures and evidence about how change um, can be beneficial. Um, all the time highlighting current drug policy failures, um, drug testing in clubs and festivals, so it needs to go on transparency on what is um, in dosage, which is another thing. So that's a part of, we're highlighting that current drug policy makes means you don't know what dosage you're taking or what you're even taking. A friend of mine is a plasterer and accidentally snorted some plaster of Paris last week and said it felt exactly like he'd had some coke. Um, so uh, then you need to demonstrate the advantages of change. So as well as the horror stories and the highlighting, again, you've still, we've been building that evidence. You look at where there have been changes, how that's reduced deaths and how that's kept people safe. Again, you can use foreign policy in other countries to demonstrate what, where they've used this and how it's improved life for people there. This is where we're headed towards sort of decriminalisation as a first policy step. You might think if we've got all those messages through, the it's easier for politicians then to move towards decriminalisation. You need to keep the police on board, which we're seeing three police forces in England at the moment um, who are all adopting soft decriminalisation under the radar policies. Um, and who can keep pushing, putting a very quiet pressure on politicians at the same time and raising awareness through media. Um, create realistic drug education, acknowledge drugs can be fun, education kept coming up for us, educate professionals about drugs. So not just educate the public about policy, separate is educate people about drugs and what the realities of drug use are and aren't. Um, demonstrate, devise policies. Then as we are moving from decrim into legal regulation, you devise policies for regulating each drug. So um, because each drug will need to be treated slightly differently, dispensed in a certain way, dosage, information um, about its strengths and its potency and that kind of thing. So that needs to start to happen. Determine policy goals. Um, is it reduced deaths? Is it keep people safe? Is it raise taxation? Is it um, save money on policing? Be really clear about what the key objectives are. Um, ring fence money from the policy shift. This was really key in that they, because once politicians start seeing how much money they can save in policing and raising taxation, they can't just spend it all on defence. They need to spend it on education and treatment of people who are using um, drugs problematically. Um, we, then we've got sort of more into, as we head towards legal regulation, ours is sort of more policy led and policy driven um, deregulation of intellectual property. Um, legally value extra legal economy. There probably needs to be some safeguarding so that pharmaceuticals can't take over and from growers and um, from small growers and things like cannabis. Tax from cannabis spent on education. We've said that audit and transparency of tax havens, something jurisdiction. Secrecy so jurisdiction. secrecy jurisdiction. So just to make sure that the policy that that comes through um, benefits everybody, doesn't just fall into the capitalist trap benefit benefiting a few rich people or, or like alcohol being exploited by advertisers and promoted and causing more problems than we have or as many problems as we have now. That's us. She can have them. If she can use them, she can have them. <laughs> okay, that was excellent from both. Actually, normally when I do this sort of exercise, there's quite a bit of...
difference between the two groups, depending on the makeup of the group, actually kind of seemed to reach a bit of a consensus separately, which is really interesting, um, at least from my perspective. So yeah, that was that was awesome. Um, now the next exercise, I was going to do another exercise, but um, I think it's not actually going to be relevant because a lot of it has been discussed already. Um, but this one is called Consequence Networks. Um, so basically, um, this one's designed to have you guys think about um, the potential consequences of such an event. So in this case, it's legalization and regulation. Now, there's three tiers to the consequences. There's white consequences, which are positive. So that's a positive change. And again, it can be as broad as, as you want. There's the dark gray consequences, which are negative change, and the middle ground, which is either you don't know, you're unsure, or it meets both positive and negative. So basically it's about thinking about, whereas this one was uh, about thinking about the events leading up to, and including uh, legalization and regulation, this one's thinking about after legalization and regulation. So it's thinking about if that was to happen, what would the knock-on effect be? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So again, if you work in groups and start to discuss what you think the positive and negative consequences would be, I mean, lower death rates or um, less people being locked up in jail, these are obviously good starting points. Um, so, you know, use them. And I'll, I'll get your... That's great. Uh, no, no, no. Yes, they're the positive. So they are either unsure, unsure or they meet both positive mm -hmm. and negative or neither. So the, if you think of it as the grey area of consequences. So, and if you can't think of any, like... Maybe that's fine, place. that's fine. They're there just in case. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to try and think quite objectively about it. But if you can't think of any, don't, it doesn't matter. Um, they're there just in case. So I, I want it to be as kind of non-biased as possible. Um, I didn't want to say, you know, everything will be rose and great. There are obviously potential negative consequences to that. So, yeah, if you can Anyone's, and if you just write on the top, the paper on the top, and then you start to place them. A, a good way of doing this is to start with a few around this, and then think about, instead of thinking about the main one, think about that as an action, and what the consequences of that action would be. Does that make sense? Does that compute? We have to do we have to do this collaboratively, yeah. don't we? Because there's more there are fewer yeah. circles. Right, so, so we do them kind of can you what if we just see one and then everybody yeah. puts them up? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Or the consequences of the uh, I would say communities grow because communities can associate with each other. It's more understanding. So community cohesion. I don't know what to spell. Perception. So policing saves money. And raises money. And the prison system, yeah. Hmm? So like £60 grand a year. No. So it just saves money. Yeah. It saves a lot of money. Because it's a, yeah, police, police, prison, and raises money as well. That's a separate one, maybe. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Can we put a reduce, reduce yeah. reducing yeah. 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 And reduces criminal activity as well. Yeah. We're going to run out of positives at this point. 
Can we get some one of these ones? This is fame. I've got a controversial one. Huh? Encourages. I'll oh, wait till she's done that. Encourages drug use. Yeah, well, I, I, well, that could be ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. Could, I guess it could be ambiguous. Yeah, but that's one that that a lot of the general population who haven't been here today would put black. But for us, it's yeah, all right. For us, it's ambiguous. Then yeah. Do you want? I'll, I'll put it down. Okay. Can we put? Um, We're going to say encourages drug use. I think it encourages safe drug use, which is a different thing. Because I don't know that it actually encourages drug use. There's evidence that says initially there's a spike in use, initially, but doesn't last. But it could be safe drug use. So we, we could have... We could have could what if you put grey gray yeah. as encourages drug use... Or and then we could have another white one that says encourages safer drug use to split that argument a bit. There must be some negatives, guys. Uh, the stock market gets involved. Yes. Well, actually, big pharma. We yes. Because how you keep them out, I don't know. Yeah. 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 That one's they all, they all stock market. Stock market. Because that's stock the, market. Yeah. Anything that touches the stock market. If you run out, just go to post it. But then you nationalise it so it's different. You'd hope. You'd hope. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So a reduction in bloodborne biases? Reduction yeah. in bloodborne biases. Yeah. So, yeah, it's about looking at these consequences now as well and thinking about if these were events to happen, what would the potential consequences of that be? An example, you know, save lives, would that reduce cost to the economy? Would that reduce a burden on specific families? And if that happens, you know, would that... Um, really boring people will start taking drugs. Like the people who are, like, put off because it's... I'll leave you. It's stigmatised. <laughs> and you'll just be like, this is wasted on you. <laughs> How about, oh, oh yeah, we've got raises money, so that's for treatment and other yeah. for good things, isn't it? There must be bad things. What are all the arguments against legalising, against legal regulation? It's being soft on crime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't believe that. No. No. Yes, we've got that. Yeah, we've, yeah. What about um, reduces money for criminal gangs? Reduces. Yeah. 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 There won't be any drug money. Like drug debts. Unless the NHS will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's not just the saving lives here as well. It's all of cent- all the producer countries and all those countries that and people that are exploited on those countries. All their lives get saved too. Not necessarily. You would yeah. have to set up a system where it was fair trade because actually it could even be more exploitative. Can you imagine if Tesco sold cannabis? Because look what they do to fucking dairy farmers. So we're assuming it was not legally regulated in other countries then. So it could, so it could be exploited. Something about could mean people in producer countries are exploited. There's something about like within a capitalist structure that it is like how do you not have people exploited? You know, which to prevent the country should produce it. Majority governments are being used that way, so it's it's mm. not it's not having an impact i.e. on the employment <laughs> or economy yeah. of that country, or well, probably the economy. Because it's you know, yeah. 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 it's not just a it's genuine thing. Yeah, it's less. How do we write that then? I mean, this is an economy anyway. Yeah. This is this is money flowing into unmarked bank accounts at the rate of 
billions. You know, and that's well, that's not the same. But you know, what you find out, what there's an underlying current here. What, why we we know that that would make sense. Let's the status quo still more or less the same. This is something that's got to be increasing. It's going to be some pension um, payments. <laughs> How do we summarise that? Can you summarise yes. it? Uh, yeah. I'm summarise it. <laughs> it. It would bring about certain yeah, sorry, no, economic no, reform. Right. Right. Say you know what you're getting. Like it's not like free drugs for the price of one. Because when you get like um, people that made over, you know, like drug dealers are put in a, a giant the lab stuff to, to increase the. That's, that comes under safer um, oh, drug yeah. use, I think, yeah. encouraging yeah. safe drug use uh, and, sa and saving no, lives properly because you have a clean, higher quality it's product like, could be a great thing. Heisenberg. Yeah, I'd like to think. Yeah. 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 Heisenberg is the yeah. purest yeah. man. <laughs> So just like another minute on this, and then we'll uh, do one Seven. very quick exercise. Savings to emergency yeah. services. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. isn't that saves money? Oh yeah. We need, sort of need little things of like little things. That's all right. Oh, we've got an ad to our training. Oh, okay. Cultural, yeah. like yeah. philosophical yeah. evolution <laughs> would come about maybe. Uh, how we view intoxication. Like, uh, philosophical, what, how do you say that? Uh, sorry, evolution. philosophical evolution. Uh, like, like on the continent, people look, look at Britain and go, you, you, you abuse alcohol you know, on the continent. I look at Scotland, say, it's for a... Okay, I'll add. Yeah. There's something there. Oh, England, they say, yeah, anyway, so... Uh, great. Yeah, well, so, yeah, this one, again, we're thinking about... The wider impact of <laughs> these kind of movements. Uh, hopefully, you all can have got some interesting discussion points from it. Basically, I want to just wrap up very quickly, and I want you to—I'll uh, start moving these. And I just want you to return to the key players. I want you to open the envelope and lay them out on the table in front of you. And basically, I want to ask the question: Has have any of them changed? Are there any missing from the ones you originally did? Are there any which are different, or are any that you think aren't relevant anymore? So, thinking about what you originally put on.